the problem that we're trying to tackle at the moment is that we know that even though we're being able to treat women more and better and better, so thankfully we, we are able to diagnose the uh, diagnosis early, we have better targeted treatments, we still have an increase of incidences of breast cancer worldwide. And we know some of the risk factors, lack of exercise, but also, you know, family history, like the ones in our family, it's, it seems, um, alcohol intake, high fat diet, we know those risk factors, but they still don't explain fully why more and more women are being diagnosed with the disease. So the area that I'm interested in and is being funded by Breast Cancer UK is to try and understand the role of chemicals on the disease and the development of the disease and specifically interested in chemicals that deregulate or disrupt our own hormonal systems, we call them endocrine disruptors. And these chemicals are everywhere. And I guess that's one of the reasons why we should be concerned. You know, they're there, we can have them in our food, in our water, in the air that we breathe, because they are, for example, pesticides that are used regularly in agriculture, but also they're in day-to-day -day products that we use every day. So they, we find them coating um, till receipts, coating tins, in sunscreens, in hand creams, in shampoos, everywhere. So they're really everywhere. And whilst they're not present in these, in these products at, at very high levels, the problem is that we're exposed to a multitude of them on a day-to-day -day basis. So my research is trying to understand how these chemicals can act together, we call it the cocktail effect or the combination effect, to lead to the initiation of breast cancer. And in addition to that, um, I'm also interested in understanding how they can then interact with other known risk factors to increase the risk. So if you think about uh, an individual who has, who doesn't do much exercise, has a high fat diet, takes lots of alcohol, has a family history, and then on top, they have quite a lot of these chemicals in their tissues. Are they the ones that are going to add to the risk to a point that we tip the scales and the cancer develops. So that, that's the research that I do and, and the question that I'm trying to address. And the, the, the new project that I'm hopefully will be able to start once we get back into our labs with all this COVID issue and um, uses these um, kind of 3D culture systems. So they're kind of the size of a post-it note, they're quite small. Uh, but we managed to grow human cells and human tissues in 3D with a constant flow of nutrients, which makes the cells believe they're in the breast and behave as if they're in the breast rather than in a common, you know, traditional petri dish, let's say. So the advantage of this is I can test the effects of these chemicals in something that resembles the breast quite a lot. I don't need to use animal systems, so all of my work is animal free. And hopefully it will give me some answers on how these chemicals act together and can initiate breast cancer. So why do we need to do to know this? I, it is very important for prevention. It is very important for us to take ownership of our own exposures and try to reduce that. But more than that, is to try and influence the regulators and governments to, to change the way that they look at chemicals in combination and to be more stringent in the way that they regulate these chemicals so they can reduce our exposures as well.